Hey everyone, and welcome to the All It Takes a Goal podcast, the best place in the entire world, including all of Canada, to learn how to build new thoughts, new actions, and new results. I'm your host, John Acuff, and today I'm going to tell you a story about a castle, a third grade teacher, and you. At the end of it, I'm going to offer you a very simple invitation. What do you think of when you think of New England? When you think of New England, what pops into your mind? I personally think of brightly lit fall trees, apple orchards with rickety self-pick ladders and windswept beaches that are perfect for wistful looking, but far too cold for even summer swimming. I think of lobsters and lighthouses, aggressive accents and snow plows that hum through the night so that even a foot of snow can't keep you from school in the morning. Ipswich, Massachusetts was all of that and so much more to me when I was a little kid. It was on the North Shore, surrounded by the kind of towns and attractions that have names that They feel like they're plucked directly from a Hallmark Channel Christmas movie. Names like Manchester by the Sea, Marblehead, Singing Beach. I would ride my bike as a nine-year-old to the ocean and stare at Crane's Castle, a 56,000-square-foot fortress that loomed large over the North Atlantic. We had a castle in our town, but more than that, we had Mrs. Harris. Mrs. Harris was my third grade teacher at Doyon Elementary School. Our mascot, and I am not making this up for a second, our mascot was a clam. Certainly, certainly a frightening figure for a sports jersey. I mean, let's be honest, if a clam is coming at you, if a clam is angry at you, you've got at best two, maybe three weeks to get out of the way. I don't remember that entire year, what what third grader does, but one assignment became a promise and some promises you never forget. We were supposed to write a handful of poems for a grade. Mrs. Harris set loose a a room full of would-be Robert Frost's and Emily Dickinson's. And I scribbled down one poem, which which turned into two, which turned into 20. And I, I felt like I'd stumbled into a cave full of treasure And there was no dragon. What was that moment for you? When when you fell into something that that feels like it had been waiting for you. Maybe it was starting your first business. Maybe it was that first time you realized you owned something. Like it was a small something, but you really owned it. And if you worked harder, you made more money. And you couldn't believe someone was paying you to do something that you loved. Like you think to yourself, I do this for free. Like you whisper that to yourself. I do this for free, hoping that the spell wouldn't be broken on whatever kind of magic this was. Maybe it was the first time you got a medal for finishing a 5K. Me, a runner? Never. You had scoffed six months earlier when a friend asked you to do it. But yet there you were, walking back to your car with an afterglow that rivaled the sun. So it turns out, you can do this. Maybe, maybe it was when you moved to a city that you dreamt about for years. I hear that story all the time living in Nashville. So what happens is it starts out with a vacation, like a honky tonk long weekend with friends that leads into a what if that, that turns into Googling real estate in middle Tennessee months or Or years later, you find your family here walking the streets of Franklin or walking Broadway, and you can't believe you did it. In the third grade, Mrs. Harris laminated a collection of my poems about trees and beaches and bikes and birds, and she told me I was a writer. But I I didn't believe her at first. I sat on that dream for a while. I don't mean a year. I don't mean a decade. I don't even mean 20 years. In the third grade, I knew I wanted to be a writer. I didn't admit that to myself until I was 34 years old. Why did I wait 25 years? Why delay a dream for a quarter century? Well, why do any of us put off the things we love the most? Life life got busy. Bills got chatty. Adulthood washed over the sandcastles I'd built on those New England beaches so long ago. And fear? 
Fear crowded out all my hope. Fear is a funny thing because it argues both sides of the coin. When you're in your 20s and your 30s, fear will tell you that you're, you're too young to do the thing, regardless of what the thing is. It tells you that you don't have enough experience. Who are you to do that? No one will listen. You don't have the maturity or the wisdom to pull that off. But then in your 40s and your 50s, fear, fear changes its tune. Now it tells you that you've missed your chance. You're, you're too late. The opportunity has passed you by. You don't have enough time. And you want to ask fear, when was I the perfect age to chase this dream? As if fear will say to you, you know, that's a good question. There were 10 minutes when you were 34 that were ideal. It was a Tuesday in October. It's a real shame you missed it. Fear won't tell you that. So I will. Today is the perfect day to chase a dream. Tomorrow is too. Mrs. Harris told me I was a writer, and that was a flare of hope that shot right up from my little third grade heart and eventually was so bright that even the 34-year-old jaded version of me could no longer ignore it. So let me tell you something in case you've never met your own Mrs. Harris. You're a writer. You're a runner. You're an entrepreneur. You're a singer. You're a photographer. You're a CEO, you're a leader, you're a drummer, you're a real estate agent, you're the purveyor of the world's cleanest garage, the smallest credit card debt, and a thriving public speaking career. Or maybe, maybe you're something entirely different. Maybe none of the words I just used are your word, but I, I know you have one. That's what I know about you. You're capable of more than you can possibly imagine. I believe that in my bones because I've had a front row seat to that exact thing thousands of times in the last 12 years. I didn't intend that at first, but when you realize your own dream, you can't resist helping other people with their dream too. A dream always starts with self, but it always ends in service. Let me say that again. A dream always starts with self, but it always ends in service. I'm always slow to the party. It took me 25 years to realize what I could be. But once I get there, my favorite thing to do is to tell everyone else where the party is. I point out the, the fastest paths. I share every obstacle to avoid and reveal the hard fought lessons so that you don't have to fight for them too. Then I put it all in the best invitation I can create. Edit. Then I put it all into the best invitation I can create to make sure you also get to the party. That's what this is. This is an invitation. It's an invitation to the best party, the party of possibility, the party of what if, the party of why not me, the party of why not now. But maybe you've tried before, right? Maybe all those previous attempts at your goal paraded right into your mind when you dared to dream about a new goal for a new year. Maybe you wondered, how will this time be any different? I've wondered, I've wondered that too. I mean, according to the University of Scranton, 92% of all New Year's resolutions fail. Those odds are not in our favor. Do you want to know why most goals fail though? I mean, there are dozens of reasons. I listed out 24 recently because I am a goal nerd and that's just the kind of thing I like to do in my free time. There are so many reasons that goals fail, but they all boil down to three things. Number one, an abundance of fear. Number two, a disconnection from desire. Number three, a lack of community. That's it. If you want to accomplish anything, those are the only three villains you must face. Imposter syndrome, rejection, comparison, procrastination, failure, the pressure of success, perfectionism, criticism, those are all just types of fear. That's, that's all those are. Boredom, inconsistency, discouragement, lack of follow through. All of those things happen when you're disconnected from your desire. When you lose touch with what you really care about, who you really are, and what you're really designed for. Accountability, loneliness, frustration, isolation. All of those things happen when you lack community. You were never meant to dream alone. The bigger the dream the bigger the community you'll need. Let me say that again. The bigger the dream, the bigger the community you'll need. Fear, desire, community. If you deal with those, you can build the kind of life you've always wanted. So 
guess what we're going to do together this year? We're going to face our fears. We're going to reconnect to our desire. We're going to lean into community. And and not just that, that's just the start. We're going to figure out how to stack the deck in our favor by starting our goals the right way. We're going to tap into the superpower of self-awareness. We're going to pick goals from the five games that matter most in life. We're going to build easy goals that ensure success instead of trying to run a marathon tomorrow. We're going to stay motivated through the middle of the goal when it gets boring and cumbersome and the high of January has long worn off. We're going to do a calendar heist and steal back our time for the things that matter most. We're going to find our people and in doing so, find our real potential. We're going to beat procrastination and show up, show up, show up. We're going to learn a system for maximum creativity, minimum stress, and massive courage. We're going to escape apathy, defeat procrastination, and achieve more than we ever have before. Does that, does that sound like a lot to accomplish at a party? It is. That's why this is going to last all year. That's right, all year. After a decade of one-off goal challenges, goal courses, and goal books, I finally have the team, time, and resources to build the thing you've been asking me for. Not a, not a great week of content, not a great month, not even a great quarter, a great year. This is an invitation to the culmination of 12 years of goal setting, goal chasing, and goal accomplishing. It's called the Guaranteed Goals Community. Think of it like Home Depot for goals. In addition to dozens of video lessons from me that teach you everything from figuring out who you are to creating a motivation portfolio to building a winning mindset, you'll find the most encouraging people on the planet. Imagine having a community of hundreds of people who cheer for your goals, commiserate when you get knocked down, and walk the road from start to finish with you every step of the way. Imagine a smart place to ask a question from someone who's tried the goal you're trying. Imagine 365 days of motivation. Imagine a slingshot that pulls back in January and a finish line you cross in December. Imagine the story you'll tell and the people you'll help someday when you bump into your own Mrs. Harris in the guaranteed goals community. Now, imagine that it's a dollar a day. Only don't just imagine that because that's what it is. It's the most expensive idea I've ever invested in, but it's also the most affordable for you. Why? Because I can't tell you that I believe everyone who is listening to this, everyone who listens to this podcast is capable of so much more and then create a community that's so expensive, only a few people can join it. I think about Ipswich and Mrs. Harris a lot, obviously. I mean, I I sometimes wonder... What would have happened? What would have happened to me if she didn't tell me I was a writer? I wonder what would have happened if I I didn't write my first blog or my first book or my first speech. I wonder if I'd be somewhere in a cubicle right now. I wonder if fear would still be getting the best of me. I wonder if I'd still feel disconnected from the desire to be a writer. I wonder if I'd feel like an island separated from community. I'm, I'm glad I don't have to wonder that very often. Because I did meet Mrs. Harris. I did write that first book. I did start that business. I did find community. I don't want you to ever wonder what might have been. Write your book. Start your business. Run your race. Declutter that garage. Pay off the debt. Go get the degree. Raise that family. Speak on all the stages. Do as many goals as you can possibly dream up. And if you want to make sure they're guaranteed to succeed... Let's do them together this year. Join me in the Guaranteed Goals community at www.acuff.me slash goals. That's A-C-U-F-F dot M-E slash goals. Thank you for listening today. Here's to your own castles. We'll put all the links in the show notes as always. And thank you for reviewing my podcast. Here's one from Mar Moore underscore 27 that I absolutely loved. She or he, that could go both ways, Mar Moore said, I started listening to the ATG podcast after I finished Soundtracks. I love John's style of presenting information. He's honest and he does it in a funny way. It's just the accountability check I need to make sure that I'm focusing my time and energy on what matters most to me. Thank you so much for that, Marmore. I really appreciate that. Please make sure you subscribe or follow so that you don't miss another episode. I'll see you next Monday. And remember, all it takes is a goal. Thanks for listening. 
To learn more about the All It Takes is a Goal podcast and to get access to today's show notes and exclusive content from John Acuff, visit acuff.me slash podcast. Thanks again for joining us. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of the All It Takes is a Goal podcast. Thank you.